We are back for episode 3 of the Nintendo Pipeline. I'm CMM1215 and I'm going to be your host today. Uh, can you all introduce yourselves? Sure, I'm Jared. Uh, you might know me as 1UP Muffin on the Nintendo Era Discord. And I'm Barry, better known as Raccoon. Alright, so today is a special episode um, because uh, although we we're recording this uh, on April 6th, we just found the Pac-Man 99 news and we're kind of freaking out about it for a little bit. Um, but uh, this is actually about Animal Crossing. Um, Animal Crossing is hitting its 20th anniversary very soon, and actually, if you are listening to this right now, uh, it'll be released on the 20th anniversary, which is April 14th um, of the original Animal Forest for N64. Um, so we kind of wanted to spend a little bit of time to go through some of our Animal Crossing memories and then talk about um, New Horizons and you know where we're at since it's been about a year now. So um, first of all, um, yeah, what was the first a Animal Crossing game that you guys played? I guess we can we can start with Jared on this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, the first one I played was. Animal Crossing for the GameCube, also known as Population Rising. Is that correct? Population Growing. Population yeah. Growing. Gotcha. Yeah, I think I got it used, and it was it was still, like, really... It was the time when GameCube games were, like, pretty cheap. Like, now they're, like, a million dollars. But, like, I got Animal Crossing GameCube for, I think, 20 And I loved it. I loved exploring my town. I loved meeting my neighbors. I loved uh, collecting the NES games. It was just a magical experience all around. And uh, what about you, Barry? I am a small child. So my first Animal Crossing game was City Folk for the Wii. Yeah, it was... Um, I didn't get it near launch. It probably would have been in 2009 or 2010. Um yeah, and I, I, one of my older sisters probably got it, and we played it together, and I thought it was neat. And City Folk remains high on my list of Animal Crossings because of that. Everybody's favorite Animal Crossing is the first one they played, but I guess we'll get to that later. Yeah, so, um, you know, for me, my first was GameCube Animal Crossing. I was very excited for it to, to come out, and I played it, and I was enraptured by it and my sister played it with me too and we would fight over it <laughs> um but yeah i mean just i remember you know we had the guide for it as well which was more of a catalog and uh yeah i mean there's so much to do and find it was just a very different game than most other games at the time um pretty sure i, I want to say i got it like day one but i, I don't I don't totally remember. Um, so I guess kind of expounding from that, I'd like to ask you guys about some of your favorite Animal Crossing memories in, in general. Um, we'll start with Barry this time. Oh, Animal Crossing memories. I, I have so many. Um, launches obviously um, become important, especially with something like Animal Crossing. Um because you that's the start of your adventure and that persists um launch of the leading up to and the launch for new leaf was an incredible time for me because that would have been the first that i was excited for ahead of time uh in the hype period and um i was very excited for that game i followed it when it came out in japan because it you know at the time, you know, for people that are unfathomably even younger than me, there was a time where Nintendo games didn't have universal launches, um, like global launches. So New Leaf came out to uh, Americans, at least North Americans, on June 9th, 2013. Uh, but for uh, in Japan, the game originally came out in fall, the year prior, fall of 2012. So there was a good six months where the game was out and I could watch footage of it and watch people play it and not understand any any of the dialogue. Um, and that was cool. Uh, New Leaf was sort of an institution in that sense that the hype period for it was so long. Um, I remember seeing 
you know, early E3 screenshots of that game uh, and watching it transform into the game it finally ended up as, being excited for it, being uh, <laughs> characteristically enraged as a 13-year-old when it was announced for June 9th instead of, like, you know, April or whenever I must have been expecting. I remember the specific moment that I found out that it was coming on June 9th and I was so unreasonably upset. Uh, but that's, <laughs> you know, that's a good memory, I guess, you know, for a forum shit poster like me. Uh, yeah, so New Leaf was really a big deal uh, in my life. Uh, New Horizons less so because I'm a bit older now. Um, but that had a pretty good hype period too, especially coming from it having been so long since New Leaf and it being announced so early or teased so early. You know, there's a big period between the 2018, I think, tease of Animal Crossing Switch, right? Or was it 2019? No, it was 2018. Yeah, late 2018. Uh, September 2018. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, because it was supposed to come out in 2019 and then got pushed back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, Animal Crossing and long hype cycles. It's kind of like Zelda in that regard, that that's what people expect. Um, and it's it's neat. It's an, it's an interesting thing. I realize I haven't talked about the games at all, but those a lot of my a lot of my <laughs> favorite memories for Animal Crossing are peripheral to the game itself, um, and I think that's natural for something that um, takes place in real time. All right, what about you, uh, Jared? Yeah, so I have two memories that stick out to me in particular. One is uh, from the more... Uh, in Animal Crossing GameCube, there was a bigger variety of Animal Crossing interactions. And the first time I had uh, a neighbor steal something from my inventory uh, was like <laughs> absolutely wild. So like Blue Bear uh, stole a fossil that I got. And it made me despise Blue Bear in every single Animal Crossing since. <laughs> um, and I like that Animal Crossing can give me that hatred for a uh, a cartoon bear. And uh, the other one was New Horizon. Um, I was playing with like a bigger group of friends, and we took like a fun group photo on like the rocks, and like that was just a very fun thing. Everyone doing poses and. It felt like hanging out virtually, and it was neat. Yeah, I mean, you know, especially given the release timing of New Horizons, which, you know, coincided with the beginning of the pandemic, Mm -hmm. you know, being able to to hang out with friends and stuff um, in the game was was really really nice. It was really Um, enjoyable. I had a few of those uh, sessions as well. Um, For me... Um, it was definitely the villagers and the characters that were most significant to me in GameCube Animal Crossing, um, in terms of like my memories of them, like Stu is my neighbor, he's a blue cow and, uh, you know, he became my like favorite animal for life and just like kind of what Jared was saying about the, the differences in, um, interactions you can get between villagers in, in later Animal Crossing games, they've kind of dulled it down a little bit but in the original you have villagers that were just so mean and i loved it like (laughs) i thought it was really funny so i think maybe one of my favorite memories would be just getting bullied by my villagers um you know and that first time you pay your house off and everything and the other main one is not an in-game memory but um when wild world was announced for the ds i was very 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 excited um you know, especially when they were saying, you know, online will be in it and everything. And I remember leading up into that, that launch, um, just like seeing little bits of it was just a really fun, uh, time. Um, one last thing I'd like to mention quickly as well is, uh, another memory that's not in the game itself, but, uh, last year I was lucky enough to go to PAX East and they had the Nintendo booth there was entirely like, or like, you know, like 75% was, was Animal Crossing. Um, and it was magical. Like they captured the look and, and feel of, of Animal Crossing perfectly. And they had like props and, you know, people in 
costume and stuff, and we got to go through there after playing a guided uh, demo of it, which was also really good and fun. I mean, you know, it's Animal Crossing, you knew what to expect, but, you know, getting able to, being able to try it a little early was, is a treat. And then, but the actual, like, booth for, like, photos and stuff was just so cool. Like, it, it was just, it was, it was nice. It'll always stand out in my mind, I think. Yeah, I remember PAX footage coming out. That was it was in late February that the main PAX, like, yeah, right? Yeah, super cool, super cool to see. Um, really cute booths. That was the first time that we knew about the uh, overhead camera. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, I remember. Nice. I, I used remember that tr- most of the time. <laughs> the GameCube-ish camera. It's not quite GameCube, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I use that camera quite a lot too. Um, very happy it was included. I remember during my 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 like demo session, um, kind of experimenting and and seeing and asking questions about some of that stuff. I remember trying to dig some info out, and I remember learning a couple of neat little tidbits while I was there. And yeah, it was just super cool. It was a great it was a great time. Um, really quickly, you mentioned wild world and I, I really regret not getting wild world when it came out because i like i saw kids on like the playground playing it i was like oh that sounds cool and that was just a time where i like just couldn't buy many games that just wasn't one i picked up but i feel like i would have really liked that one if i played it when it came out yeah you know it's funny because i looked forward to wild world a lot and i played it a good amount but i definitely didn't play it as much as the gamecube game it was definitely missing something for me um and i think that was just maybe some of the events because that was the game that they kind of got rid of Mm -hmm. some of the more like holiday themed ones Mm -hmm. yeah it was definitely cut down so another uh important thing i wanted to ask you guys was uh what is the essence of animal crossing for you like what does what does animal crossing mean to you um we can start with barry on that one first I'm of the opinion that Animal Crossing has meant different things across its life. Um, At the time of listening, or the time of release of this episode, it's 20 years, right? Yep. Um, 20 years in the series. (laughs) And it's slowly changed its, um, its primary conceit, or like its, you know, its, its, core essence i suppose um in the beginning the appeal of animal crossing was that it was something that changed where things happened um whether or not you were there um that's like the tagline on the gamecube version is something happens every day whether you're there or not um and for the first three games, I'm going to say, and some of New Leaf, um, that was a huge part of the appeal. Um, or that, or rather, that was the main appeal, was that it was a world that didn't need you, and you got to be a part of it, and that was your privilege. Um, but it didn't need you to function, or the illusion of that. Um, and then with New Leaf and New Horizons now, the games are more a a playground. They're more um, well, playground's the wrong word. They're they're a canvas, honestly. Um, they're somewhere. It's it's a world that exists to serve the player, and neither is really better or worse than the other. It's just a different appeal, and the latter has given them incredible mass market success. I mean, Animal Crossing: New Horizons is like the best-selling game in japan or something right is that correct yeah it's it was like one of the biggest launches at least like one of the biggest launches it was huge it was huge (laughs) huge. yeah um so i mean to me uh i guess it just depends if i ask that question now um the essence of animal crossing is customization um is making stuff with very limited tools Um, and there's an appeal to that it's something that um, it's a lot slower than the sims you know you you don't have or even minecraft you don't have as much control um, but the control you have is absolute um, yeah that makes sense Um, yeah that's actually a very good point it's your dominion um, 
but that dominion is somewhat fixed. Uh, so that's the essence of Animal Crossing now. Yeah, you know, um, I honestly feel pretty similarly. Um, to me, the big thing, especially in the original, was just, yeah, time passes. Things happen in real time. You can miss them if you're not there. Things happen with or without you. Um, and that was really neat to me. It still is neat to me, um, having a lot of time-based activities, like real-time based activities and now it's definitely more of like a canvas and you can do stuff or you cannot do stuff and there's a lot more room for like you know decorating your town or making your town unique um it's less about i mean you still talk to your villagers and have relationships with them but i feel like it's less it's less about that now whereas in the original that was kind of the the main you know the main thing um Jared, what 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 would you what do you think on this on this topic? Yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, to me personally, it'll always be like that life sim, living in a peaceful virtual world, uh, with a wonderful atmosphere and cute characters, and customizing has always been a part of that. So I don't want to downplay that part, but definitely for me, like the virtual life thing is it's why I come to it mainly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely don't want to downplay the the customization either, but it's it's definitely you know obviously it's grown since since the originals. Um, so speaking of that that kind of growth, you know, it's been a year now since uh, New Horizons has come out, and so there's been a lot of different stuff that's happened in that year. You know, the game at launch, um, there was a lot of stuff like terraforming that was very new. Uh, the whole crafting system and, and gathering, you know, stuff to, to actually make furniture with that. Um, having outdoor furniture for the first time, which really opens up the customization of the town. And then over the past year, we've gotten a series of updates that add all kinds of stuff. Um, everything from the Bunny Day update that began <laughs> the game's life uh, to, you know, stuff that added... Um, red and artwork back into the game the diving elements like a sea creature diving i mean um you know the mario update and then we had a lot of holiday specific updates like halloween uh, thanksgiving christmas and uh a lot of us experienced the new year's holiday this time there's been a lot of stuff that's been added and not only in terms of specific you know holidays and like new gameplay features but also in terms of just like stuff like seasonal items and stuff like that. Um, so I guess considering everything that's that's happened in this first year from from launch until now, I just wanted to kind of ask you guys um, what your favorite new element of, of Animal Crossing New Horizons is, uh, whatever that may be. Um, we'll start with Jared on this one. Yeah, I thought outdoor furniture was really the the huge thing for me. Usually after I finish decorating my Animal Crossing rooms, I kind of feel done with the decorating side of the game. But now with the whole island as kind of my canvas, it definitely expanded that. So it made, it definitely gave me more things to do after I'd already decorated my house. Yeah, that is definitely a, a major, um, a major kind of new thing here even if something as simple as like oh you can place furniture outside now like okay whatever but like what that actually opens up is is pretty significant um what about you barry adjacent to that i'm going to say that the landscaping is huge um it's definitely of the same type of change as placing furniture outdoors but to me, the landscaping, I've gotten a lot more out of it um, because it just took so long. It was a big project for me because my, I, I think we're going to get to that a little bit later, but my uh, New Horizons Island has um, uh, a huge portion in the northeastern corner that was on the first plateau tier that's just cleared out into a plane now. And that took a non-negligible amount of time, you know, across days uh, to actually dig out. 
so landscaping uh, really gives you a lot of like long-term options. I would say that furniture is neat and it's kind of essential for a lot of things. I t tend to use it sparingly. I think that too much furniture outside looks pretty bad, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, but the landscaping they didn't have to do. Uh, and it's just very cool. It reminds me of um, Chibi Robo Park Patrol. <laughs> if oh, that's interesting. If you played Chibi Robo Park Patrol. A little bit. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty similar uh, in the sense of, I mean, instead of doing it by hand, you have to just like choose big squares, almost like acres. I think you have like a 10 by 10 grid, maybe 20 by 20 uh, grid of a of spaces and you can like set canals and uh, different you, it, it, it's similar it's similar in setting a layout and the appeal that that brings with it yeah you know it's interesting and you also mentioned acres so I, I have to mention too that like yeah we've gone from you know the original game which did have acres the, the map was divided into different screens essentially um to now with new horizons you have you know this full island that's just you know there's no like there's no real division or, or anything in it and to what you said about um you know kind of terraforming the place and changing it and also in the beginning really kind of having it to dig it out of like basically just a wild <laughs> random island is, is, is interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I would agree that too much furniture outdoors uh, kind of makes things icky. It, it's, 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 I've always had a tough time decorating stuff in Animal Crossing because there's stuff that I think will work, but it doesn't yeah. work the way I expected it to. Mm -hmm. um, Outside, you really... Yeah, you have to plan it. Yeah. And you don't get those, you know full terraforming tools for a little while too yeah um, i i was gonna say that new horizons is at its best for like the first two months maybe um definitely like the first week or so like maybe it's 10 days that's like the tutorial um that's incredible um and then the time after you get those uh landscaping tools which i think is after those first 10 days if you do everything ideally it can be much longer yeah. than that um, you know, once you kind of set your town the way you want it, that that process from starting from nothing to building something is incredible, and no other game has come close to doing that in the series. Um, that's definitely where New Horizons is strongest. New Leaf, it's, on the other hand, it's a great on ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New Leaf uh, starts really, really slow, in my opinion. I don't think it's playable until like a month in. <laughs> Um, but New Horizons is at its strongest at the start. Yeah, New Leaf, I remember being extremely frustrated uh, yeah. with Isabel because I she was basically that game's like tutorial monster and she stopped me from doing everything that I wanted to try. <laughs> yeah. So I blamed her for it. <laughs> there was, uh, even though I like the older Animal Crossing games a lot, there is one horrible thing where uh, I love fishing in these games. And in the old ones, you had to wait until a fishing rod became available at the store. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it yes. might not be a few days. And that was annoying. So I like that you can just craft a fishing rod in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things about um, New Horizons early game is that it's both more restrictive and more open at the same time. Uh, because of the crafting system, you're able to do certain things earlier. Um, but then there's like you know, other stuff you're not able to do. Like, this is the only Animal Crossing game where you start out in a town and you can't actually walk around the entire island on day one because you don't have the tools to. <laughs> like, you can't go across rivers. There's no bridges. You can't go up on cliffs. So, like, the way the island kind of ends up being slowly available to you over the first couple days, I think is interesting. Um, but I would agree that, in general, the terraforming aspects you know before you just have to deal with whatever island you had or you know reset until you get one that you liked um now 
you can change rivers, you can change cliffs, you can change, you know, you can make waterfalls, you can make little platforming areas if you want to. It, it opens up a lot in terms of what you can do and what you can change. Really, the only thing you can't adjust are, are beaches. Like, that's, like, besides that, you basically have free reign. Um, and that definitely offers a new depth of, of interactivity um, to the island and, 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 to, and to the game and what you can do with it. Um, so I guess on that note, um, what have you guys done with your town? Um, and I guess what, what are some of the events that you've done and stuff too? Um, we'll, we'll start with Jared on this one. Yeah, so I I didn't do a whole lot. I decorated all my rooms. I did some outdoor furniture, but nothing, nothing massive. I... I don't want to permanently change my island, so I've not touched terraforming. <laughs> really? Um, you yeah. haven't modified the landscape at all? I don't think so. Maybe I've done wow. it a little tiny bit, but I... I don't know. My island's my island. I can't... Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, yeah. Maybe I've I done, like, a tiny bit, but it's definitely not a lot. Um, I, I tried to do mine kind of mildly like there was a pond next to a river so i cut that into like a river island you know what i mean yeah so like a little naturally some of it less so but yeah yeah and then and then for the events i i didn't do that many of them i did bunny day i did most of the stuff for bunny day and then i came back for new year's eve and that was a that was a really cute one seeing all the animals um do those little uh, party poppers uh and, and the the countdown clock was really cool that was that's a cool event yeah i'm still mad that i messed up the uh the recording and the photo i took of that because i wasn't expecting oh. uh, like the year to come up in fireworks mm, <laughs> at the yeah, end so, cool. <laughs> so, so it, like cut off right before that happened yeah. <laughs> um yeah um that's interesting about the terraforming too, because I actually was hesitant to change too much because I wanted to keep some of my islands natural, random kind of appearance. Um, so like, I didn't particularly want to change like, for example, like where rivers flowed and how they moved. I wanted to build around them, but I did some minor tweaks so that, you know, for example, a bridge would be possible in an area mm-hmm. where it may not have been possible due to the width of yeah. the river. I think I might have done that. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Barry, what have what have you done so far with, with your town? Uh, what are some of the events that you've done? So far? It's been a year. I know. it's It's been a lot. <laughs> but, you know, what what's the state of your town, I guess? Um, the state of my town is probably best uh, described as disrepair. <laughs> flooded with flowers of course flowers spread like weeds in this game yes um, yes they do <laughs> weeds really don't, annoying <laughs> weeds don't even spread like weeds anymore no. and yeah. weeds are easier to pick up than flowers yeah and yep. it's funny if you play every day the flower spreading is worse if you stop playing everything is preserved so the best yes. thing to do to maintain your town is to never play with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're not wrong <laughs> I have a very nasty flower problem in my town yeah. right now. So at some point, um, I've been thinking of like maybe starting a Twitch channel and streaming, f- fixing my Animal Crossing town or something. Um, I'm not sure if I'll actually follow through with that, but um, at some point I'm going to fix it because right now there are just so many flowers everywhere. Um, I've tried to keep for my own... Uh, enjoyment and interest uh, like a consistent history like the shop hasn't moved and the town has changed around it you know right Um, I don't think the Able Sisters have moved either I put them you gotta put them in the southern part by the beach you just have to if you're a long time Animal Crossing fan (laughs) and your and your uh, Able Sisters isn't either right next to uh, Nook's Cranny or at the very bottom of the map, you know, what's wrong with you? Mine's right next to Nooks. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. Wild World way. Yeah, um, I kind of think of it as a little shopping district. Yeah. You know, with well, like two Wild buildings. World, it was like that. Wild World, they were right next to each other on one, like, lot. 
Yeah. Um, mm. And then in GameCube, they were always in the southernmost row. Uh, I prefer GameCube. Uh, spoilers, that's my favorite. My, actually, GameCube, um, my Nook was in the top left. <laughs> yeah, Nook, Nook is always in the top row. My, uh, yeah, and so is the, the post right office. Nook. Yeah. And then Able Sisters are always in the bottom. Yeah. Bottom row. I, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. Like, it, the game gives you new ways to to move these buildings and, and stuff and then we're kind of like eh man it's kind of like tradition we can't really do that <laughs> yeah I, it's it's weird like i i'm not anti-customization but i kind of like that element of like y- you live here this is a place you can't you can't change this place yeah it's not yours yeah um, yeah um yeah because you're kind of coming into this island and you're like well you're a visitor you of know. the owner, you know. You know, yeah. I was I was just thinking that if I wanted to be truer to the spirit of um, the GameCube game, that the Able Sisters should be at the top near the shore because you enter from the bottom now. Mm. Um, so, mm. and Nooks should be right next to, in my case, my plaza is right next to the airport. Um, like it's right in front of it. So if I did yeah. that and then had Nooks next to it and then Able Sisters in the top, like northernmost beach, that would be the most authentic maybe to uh, GameCube. I miss trains. I love trains. I, love trains. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... mm-hmm. I do miss a lot of the the characters that haven't shown up yet. Oh, yeah. Petey. Rooster or Pete, whatever his name is. Every, everyone's going to hate me for this one, but I love Booker and copper yeah <laughs> like, really they're, funny. Right. they're so cute yeah. and they're cute yeah i mean that aged well launching in march of 2020 and not having yeah. the cops that <laughs> yeah. aged incredibly well they couldn't have known but well they could have known but that's another topic for a much more serious yeah. oh, podcast God. yeah let's not moving um, on <laughs> in, in terms of in terms of what i've done with this game i've pretty much done every event every every little thing um that they've added over the year um i've done and uh it's definitely it's the game that has the largest amount of playtime on my switch it mm-hmm. kind of kick-started me back into playing games more consistently and uh you know so like for me like i think it's like at, I'm not, i think i looked at it yesterday it's like oh you have like 340 hours in animal crossing which wow. is very low for a lot of people who play this game mm-hmm. but for me is very <laughs> very high (laughs) um but something i've enjoyed doing is making different sections of the town Mm, so like mm -hmm. most people do the thing with like oh there's a neighborhood or whatever and then you have the part with the the shops or whatever um but i like doing things like you know um i have i'm working on something right now where it's like a cliff side and it's the, the coin item that they added in the mario items is just very satisfying because it's not like the the item was in the previous games where you like you click on it or whatever and it makes the coin noise. This time, and uh, you run through it. It's not like a fully solid object. Um, so it's fun to run through lines of coins and then they regenerate. Um, so I'm kind of trying to put something together like that that you kind of let kind of lets you run through, you know, large numbers of coin lines, you know, or whatever, um, you know stuff stuff like that i like making signs for different parts of the town with like naming different parts of the town um that's where i find like when i sit down and take a break from you know doing all the event stuff and trying to get all the items or whatever that's that's where my focus ends up ends up going and it's yeah i mean it's it's been a lot (laughs) um there's so much that's that's happened this year it's like oh fishing tourney oh you know bug tourney is also going on oh look it's christmas hey time to roll up snowmen to get you know those diys and and that stuff and you know gulliver's here and do that and he'll give you a gift like he normally does and oh look celeste has a diy for me i need to get you know star shards or meteorite shards or whatever to to make all that stuff and you know there's that kind of obsession there for me too um you know where I'll be like, I need to play at this time on this day so that I don't miss out on X, Y, or Z. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's like a mix of 
like intrinsic stuff that I just want to do. And then a mix of stuff that it's like, you know, in, in line with previous games. It's like, this is time based, you know, if you don't catch this fish, it's going to go away at the end of this month. Or, you know, if you don't go to Nook's store before 10 o'clock, then you're going to miss out on, you know, the seasonal item that's there. So it's kind of an interesting balance, I think. Um, so, yeah, I guess a good place to, to go uh, from here is um, what do you guys think of the game so far up to this point? Um, we can start with Barry on this one. Oh, well, it's Animal Crossing, so it's very cute, um, and it looks very good. The The graphics are incredible. I think they're among the best on Switch. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's generally accepted that Monolith Soft's support team did a lot of asset development for the furniture. They did a great job because all the furniture is like really, really well done um, and it fits well. It all fits together well. So yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it I... looks good. That's like the number one thing with New Horizons is that it looks incredible. Yeah, I, I definitely agree on that. And what you were saying about furniture too, They've definitely made a lot of the a lot more interactive furniture uh, than previous games. You've always been able to interact with furniture, but I've noticed they've added more interactions this time around, and I appreciate that. Um, how about you, Muffin? Um, yeah, so I think I've played this the least of everyone here, but I still had a good eighty plus hours, and that's still my top played switch games so far which uh, seems like a small time for animal crossing but for me that's a lot of time to put into one video game and i definitely enjoyed most of my time in it i definitely got to a point where i just wasn't checking in as much and then stopped like fell off but it had great customization the social stuff was rough but i still loved playing online with my friends and it was just a great game at released at just the right time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It definitely is. Or was, I should say. I, I actually haven't played online too, too much. I did in the beginning. Yeah, um, in the beginning, mostly. But I like... Um, I'm always like, oh, I can't play online again until I get my island right. And, you know, <laughs> my island's never right. So. <laughs> Um, I mean, I've, I've loved it. It's definitely been the one that I've, it's been one of the Animal Crossing games I've played the most. I, I play a lot of them and I, pl and I play them all pretty, you know, for, for quite a while. But I, I want to say this one I've played like the, the only other Animal Crossing game that I think I may have played more, um, is the GameCube one, and even then, I, I think my playtime with New Horizons kind of eclipse it. It's like those two and New Leaf are the ones that I've played the most. Um, so I really dig it. There's some weird stuff in there that I would tweak or change. Um, most of the quality of life stuff, um, like you know, having to craft uh, fish bait one by one by one mm. by one, or you know, little things like that. Yeah. But um, I can't complain. There's just so much going on, and it's the gift that kind of just keeps on, you know, giving. Oh, um, I I also just want to add how amazing the museum is in this one. It's, it's mm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They they kind of renovated the museum in this one, and it's much more interesting um, than than the previous games museums. I would I would say. Yeah, um, it's beautiful. So I guess. Our last question here, um, you know, we're still getting updates for this. We just got the Mario update and the Sanrio update recently, uh, and that also added some, uh, you know, other stuff gameplay-wise, mostly in terms of, like, designs and, 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 and that stuff. Um, but, you know, we've seen sea diving added. We've seen, um, you know, all kinds of stuff added over this past year. What do you guys want to see uh, in the future? 
and I guess we'll start with, with Jared, I guess, what's something you want to see in the future? And I mean, would it make you come back to the game as well? I think the only things that would get me to come back to the game at this point would be gameplay related things. Um, I definitely came back for the diving update. So I would come back for something. It doesn't even have to be that big, but another, another gameplay addition. Um, also gyroids, of course, gyroids would get me to come back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't think gyroids are going to come back. Um, and I think it's specifically uh, because of having furniture outside. Uh, that's too many sound sources. Mm. That is too many sound sources to yeah, have. Yeah, you know. You could, performance yeah. would tank immediately. Oh. Yeah, you can already kind of position music outside from like boom boxes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a sad way to think of it, but I, yeah, it makes sense. For a while at the start, um, they changed this, they patched it. But originally, if you had mul- multiple um, stereos outside, they all had to play the same song. Yeah, they that's ch- right. They changed it. There's either some cap to it, like you can have up to three different songs. Um, but I don't know. Maybe gyroids could be indoor only. There is no precedent for that, though. That's the only thing that well, concerns Well, wall me. furniture is. Yeah, but that's... I guess so. I know I know it's different, but you can't place any sort of wall things outside. But that's because there aren't any walls. I know, right? But, so, like, they, they have this system in there to prevent you from putting something. They could just classify it as a different thing. Yeah, I just mean on, like, the client side. Like, for yeah. players, how do you say, like... This furniture can only go on the floor inside. Ooh, this is a sound item or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something yeah. Weird. Gyroids hate dirt, <laughs> even though they're yeah, buried in they it. They sink. <laughs> if you put them outside, they just sink into the ground and you lose them forever. I mean, one way you could do it is like... Oh, dude. New Horizons gyroids. Here we go, mm-hmm. okay? Okay. If you put them outside, they don't work. But if you put them inside... They do. Yeah, maybe outside they're just like, they're, they're just, just hanging out. Yeah. And then yeah, inside they move. They're miserable when exposed to the elements. <laughs> they frown. <laughs> yeah. they, they need central air. Yeah. <laughs> There's ways to make it work, and it's so sad they're not there because that's such a big personality thing. As well as Mr. Rossetti. I miss Mr. Rossetti. Yeah, I, know I miss him too. The characters and Pete. Oh. Rossetti should be a time travel cop. That has been my <laughs> stance from the beginning. Compare your gameplay to real time, and if there's discrepancies, like you've time traveled, he shows yeah. up and he says, "Hey, you're messing with dangerous things. You're messing with and space time, and you need to stop." Yeah. Uh, what What would you like added, uh, Barry? Well, there's no precedent for much of anything new being added with a patch. Well, the only diving thing we is have, the biggest one. That's not new. Oh, it's yeah. It's, you're right. It's not new. And it was yeah. probably just cut from the base game. But... Yeah, the only thing that's been new was uh, the pumpkins. Yes. And yeah, was... planting crops. That was cool. Yeah, so maybe we'll see more of those crops because there was data mining for that. Uh, I don't know. I do not know what I... I mean, what, what I want to see, I guess, is more old stuff because that's realistic like they could totally add brewster back in yeah i was just about to not say sure the why they haven't yeah, yeah. yeah. The roost the roost is the number roost. one thing that i expect yeah, to happen put it in the museum somewhere or is like an upstairs of mm-hmm. one of the stores yeah know. it's like Maples, it's like the last store. thing i think it's the last thing they're gonna Maples do that's like a big update mm-hmm. before they do like a paid pass um i guess we already have some paid dlc in the sanrio um but that's like not really paid dlc because it's not really DLC. yeah it's, it's kind of like a quote-unquote physical <laughs> dlc <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um where you know you own a thing and you get stuff from it yeah, i mean and it was yeah. pretty significant as well in terms of yeah. the items and yeah. stuff i know for me what i'm mostly looking for right now is a lot of the stuff that was you know kind of data mined um particularly you know brewster with the roost i never particularly cared that much about it but i enjoy him as like you know new gameplay content like if you can make coffee for people again and give him gyroids or whatever then then that's cool um and then also yeah more more of the the crops and and that stuff that was in the data mine as well 
um, gyroids, you know, we're all pretty much in agreement, I think, on, on the stuff that we, that we really want to see. Um, I would just like to add, uh, you know, as we're, you know, going through year two now, I think it would be nice to see some, like, smaller holidays and events. The more simple ones were, like, you know, you come in, Isabel's in the, the plaza or whatever, and you talk to her and she gives you something. Mm -hmm. Um, the game has been kind of doing that with seasonal items instead of that, and that's fine too, but I'm, I'm down for some smaller events and smaller stuff that's not, like, tied to a particular holiday or anything like that. Yeah. I, I don't think they'll change this, but I was thinking this the other day, because one of my biggest problems with New Horizons is the news announcements when you first play in the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yep, they're so annoying. Yeah. So, because most of the time it just highlights how little happens in the game. It really, like, underscores a bold face, italics. Nothing ever seems to happen in this game. Yeah, she's losing her sock every, like, three days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, at least she calls her parents often. That's nice. Um, yeah, but not her brother. Yeah, the her most brother's important dead, one. dude. Her yeah. brother's dead. All the characters Poor... that are in the game are dead. <laughs> Poor Dixby. Anyway, they've been adding to the uh, NSO app for the game. Yes. So what if the news was in that? You didn't have to hop on. If it was somehow, like, if your Switch was online, if it could sync to that, um, that, that isn't really feasible um specifically because the way animal crossing works is you boot the game and it decides what's happening in it or you reach 5 a.m i think it might be 6 a.m in new horizons in older games it was 5 a.m i, I think, think it's, it's 5 a.m i think it's 5 a.m yeah it's 5 a.m uh and then it processes the next day mm -hmm. um if it pre-processed that um you could but then what if it was like really old, you know, like what if you were playing uh, the best, the only way to do that would be if something else was determining what was happening in your town and then that got sent to your town and that's a little too online, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It, it could still be a lot faster though. Yeah. It yeah. could work. I guess if it, if Animal Crossing could work in the background to set each day but I don't think it could. I don't think there's any reasonable way to expect that. So I guess my request would instead be that the news not happen because yeah, it's really I, I bad. Would, the news not being there would get me to play more. The same way with like <laughs> yeah. Splatoon. I would play Splatoon yeah. more if I didn't have to go through those announcements. Yeah, or at least on days where there's nothing. She's like, oh, got nothing for you today. Okay. And then it's like, you know, a text box instead of like, seven text boxes about what she watched on tv last night yep. yeah um but anyway uh before we get too long here um i did want to briefly mention uh yeah that the nso app does have nook link in it and i think it's super cool you can check your catalog on there you can use it as a keyboard when you're online you can use it for um the emotions as well um and now they added the Nook Points thing that you can do as well to get some extra items. I think it's cute. I like it as a little companion thing. Um, does anybody have any last thoughts on uh, you know, New Horizons or Animal Crossing in general now that we're at this you know, pretty major 20-year milestone? 20 years is crazy. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's only a year older. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting oh, wow. to think about. Yeah. Um, I'm just about a year older. Yeah, in it, Animal Crossing. It's amazing. I, I pretty much only played like each like big upgrade. Like I played the first one, I played New Leaf, and I played New Horizons. So I really never got burnt out of Animal Crossing and I I like it and I'll continue to play them because they're great. Yeah, I mean it's been twenty really awesome years. Uh, more people are playing than ever, which is really cool. There's more possibilities with, with the dream codes and and uh, pattern sharing and all that stuff online as well. So I'm just excited. I love Animal Crossing. I'm glad it's it's persevered and that it has this really recognizable line of characters that people really enjoy. It's just you know it's very peaceful and, and comforting, especially with the hellscape that was last year. <laughs> It's it's such uh -huh. a non-standard one of a kind series and I'm glad it's not like some niche thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm glad that Animal Crossing is have has been kind of has kind of gotten bigger and bigger. Um 
I mean, I'm excited, you know, to see whatever, whatever comes next. Um, so with that, um, we're going to wrap it up here. I just want to quickly remind you all, um, we love to hear your feedback on these episodes. So please let us know what you think. Um, and in terms of Animal Crossing, uh, we would love it if you shared your dream codes, um, the Animal Crossing uh, town trailers and posters that you can do now. I believe that service is up through the end of 2020. Uh, you know, we would love to feature them on the blog and stuff like that. So please, uh, if you have any of that content and want people to see it or you want to share it, uh, please let us know. You mean uh, 2021, and... right? Or is uh, it tw- Wait, what? You said that the service was up until the end of 2020. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the service is up until the end of 2021. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you have until the end of the year to make a really cool hype sizzle reel for your island. Uh, I didn't realize that that tool was official. I thought it was a fan yeah. thing at first. Yeah, no, it's official. It's cool. <laughs> then I heard um, the voiceover, and I was like, "Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, I my island's a mess, so I need to fix it for that. Yeah. So everyone, fix up your islands. Post some cool trailers for us. We want to watch them. Um, and yeah, until next time, uh, this has been the Nintendo Pipeline. That's good. And scene. Yeah. Very nice.